Um, and hi, everyone. It's really hi. great to see you all today. Uh, I'm Julia Goodman. I'm a woman to watch artist from 2021 and part of the SF NIMWA programming committee. And I'm happy to help moderate today as part of our ongoing series of virtual programs. I'd like to give a special thank you to Lorna, Robin, and Carol for your support, and Jamie, Lisa, Susan, and Katie, um, who are my colleagues on the SF NIMWA program committee for helping plan and um, helping with planning all of our events. I want to acknowledge, open today by acknowledging that many people in this group today had a special connection with Hung, including we're joined by Jeff Kelly, art critic and Hung's husband, and Lava Thomas, one of our women to watch, and I often heard Lava and Hung call each other sisters. Mm. Um, and at the end of the program, we'll save time for questions and also just time for people to um, share any of your personal experiences or stories that, that feel relevant. And today I'm happy to introduce Dorothy Moss. Um, just a little backstory. I first met Hung when I started dating my now husband, Michael Hall. And as soon as I met her, I was amazed, of course, by her paintings, but also how much Hung cared for Michael. But I also quickly learned how much she cared for so many of her former students. She was a force in her studio and in the classroom and then mentoring beyond um, in far into people's careers. Um, I was fortunate to have the opportunity to be her part-time studio administrative assistant from 2018 until the pandemic. And during that time, I met Dorothy when she came to Hung's studio, um, when they were deep in the planning of Hung's solo show at the National Portrait Gallery. The instant connection between Dorothy and Hung was palpable, and clearly you loved each other, you loved and respected each other. And I found great solace in knowing that you, Dorothy, would be joining Hung's estate. So um, thank you. And then the formal bio, um, Dr. Dorothy Moss is the founding director of the Hung Lu Estate. From 2011 to 2023, Moss held the position of curator of painting and sculpture at the Smithsonian Institute National Portrait Gallery. During her tenure at the Smithsonian, she was the leader of the Smithsonian American Women's History Initiative, serving as coordinator of the initiative from 2018 to 2021. Moss initiated the National Portrait Gallery's first performance art series, Identify, where she commissioned new performances by renowned artists, including James Luna, Maria Magdalena Campos Pons, Lee Mingue, Maren Hassinger, and Jeffrey Gibson. She was also direct directed the museum's triennial Outwin Butcher Portrait Competition from 2013 to 2019. As curator of painting and sculpture, she oversaw prominent commissions of portraits of women of women subjects by women artists, including Amy Sherald's portrait of Michelle Obama. Her recent projects include the exhibition and book and the, and the Obama portraits published by Princeton University Press in 2020 and the exhibition and book Hung Lu Portraits of Promised Lands published by Yale University Press in 2021 for which she also received the Smithsonian Secretary's Prize for Excellence. Please join me in welcoming Dorothy, who is joining us from her home in Washington, DC. She will give her presentation and again, we'll make sure to save time for your questions and comments. Thank you so much, Julia. And thank you to all of you for having me. It's a thrill to be with you. Um, and I had so many Zoom programs with Hung over the pandemic, I'm kind of feeling like she could pop in any moment. Mm -hmm. so I remember those wonderful programs um, with her. You probably attended others that she did. She was so active in that period of time. Mm -hmm. um, I got to know Hung um, in 2011 when she was a juror for the National Portrait Gallery's Outland Bucciver Portrait Competition. And I hadn't known her work at that point, um, but I loved listening to her talk about the entries as we reviewed all of the thousands of entries that came through. Um, and I wanted to get to know her. I just, I thought she had a brilliant mind. Um, I love the way she talked about art and life and, um, and I loved her um, passion for history. 
So I was able to travel to her studio and um, and we started laying the groundwork for an exhibition. Um, and let me share my screen now. Can everyone see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so um, I, I will, this presentation is casual. It will be a, just sort of an overview of um, Hung and Hung's and my work together and our work with Jeff Kelly um, and, and what led to um, my leaving the National Portrait Gallery to be director of Hung's estate um, in the wake of her untimely death. See. Ah, I don't want that. Sorry. There's a little bit of a delay in the this the PowerPoint is so big that I'm afraid. Let's see. Okay. Um I'm putting this slide here because this is hung in her last whoops, in her last days of life. Um let me go back. Um, when she was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, um, I was in the midst of installing her exhibition at the National Portrait Gallery, and I quickly dropped everything. I let the art handlers and registrars continue on, and I came out to say goodbye. And during that week with Jeff and Hung, I listened carefully to Hung's wishes and desires for her legacy. Um, and it was a very, very meaningful time. Her mind was sharp and she had a lot of thoughts about um, where she wanted to see her legacy go, her posthumous life, if you will. And so I absorbed all of that. And, um, and so now I'm working closely with Jeff and the studio to um, fulfill those wishes and dreams. Um, as you know, um, just as she was um, declining, her career was rising. She had a show open at the De Young in July 2021. Um, major acquisitions were happening um, in, with museums, and these are her final self-portraits, uh, The Last Dandelion, and Counting Down, um, which were acquired by the National Portrait Gallery through the generosity of many wonderful donors, um, including Kate Capshaw and Steven Spielberg, Robert and Jane Clark, um, Sissy Swig, Nancy Hoffman and Peter Greenwald, Fred Levin um, and the Shinshin Foundation, all in memory of Hung. Um, but I'll rewind the clock to go back to the time when we were working together um, back and this is 2015 um, when we started laying the groundwork for her exhibition. And I would love coming into her studio and being greeted with hugs as we all were and um, beautiful uh, California fruit and tea. Um, and we would sit and talk and she would always turn one of her hourglasses over, um, which I never thought much about. But after she died, I recognized that she cherished every second of every minute of every day. Um, and she had this collection of hourglasses uh, where, you know, and she would wear an hourglass necklace sometimes. And I really do think that was a sign of how much she embraced every moment. She took me through the years to storage and museum collections to think about what we would include. Uh, this was at the De Young. Um, she took me also to private collector's homes um, where I've met some of you. Um, she welcomed my entire family into her studio. This is my husband and my kids who are now in high school with Betsy Partridge, the writer who uh, contributed to the catalog for the exhibition. I also had many conversations with Jeff, who was um, very, a very vital part of the development of the exhibition. And we sat for hours in her office in the studio going through the database. And I 
made recordings, thankfully, of her talking about each object um, and listening to her stories. At this point, I had no idea that there were more than 47 boxes in storage down the road of archival material. I never once even asked about her papers because she was the archive for me. And I would sit and listen and ask questions. And um, we had a wonderful time together um, getting into her life and her career and thinking about how the framework of portraiture would be meaningful um, in very carefully selected examples of her work. Um, I often said to her, this exhibition would be radical at the National Portrait Gallery where people come and expect to see the portraits of the presidents. And in her final days, as I sat with her um, at her home in Oakland, I was able to share with her video clips and installation shots from the National Portrait Gallery. And in one clip, the art handlers are pushing a monumental shaped canvases of her as a soldier in China um, and her grandmother um, through the Hall of Presidents. And to me, that was performance art. I mean, we kind of got a kick out of that, that, you know, she, here she was interrupting the space in such a meaningful and profound way. Um, we published a catalog with Yale University Press which won the Secretary's Research Prize. And um, Jeff and Hung read every single word of every essay. We had an all-star cast of writers, including uh, Nancy Lim from SF MoMA, um, Elizabeth Partridge, Phil Tanari, the director of the Ulan Center in Beijing, and uh, Lucy Lepard. Uh, Jeff contributed the chronology and, um, and it's, it's a wonderful, beautifully designed book by uh, the designer is Miko McGinty. And then we had a section in the catalog with artist reflections and Lava contributed a beautiful essay um, along with Enrique Chigoya, Judy Chicago, Mel Chen, Yu Hong, Martin Mull, Amy Sherald, Stephanie Sayuko, Carrie Mae Weems and Lu Jiadong. I thought it was very important to include artist voices because Hung really was an artist artist. Um, and she constantly connected artists with each other and created a community of support for artists of her generation and younger artists. The exhibition opened um, in August of 2021. And uh, it was an exhibition that again, was years in the making. It was organized uh, chronologically, uh, but also thematically. And it began with photographs that she took during the Cultural Revolution and sketches that she made in the countryside. She borrowed a camera from, from a friend um, to make portraits of the villagers around her and beautiful sketches. In the first uh, gallery were portraits of her family. And I thought this was an important way to ground the exhibition in the context of the National Portrait Gallery and to provide context on the history that she lived through. So there were also photographs of her family that she carefully uh, saved with her mother. And these were uh, precious objects um, and, and were framed in, in one small frame where you see her with her mother and um, with her grandmother and grandfather and her aunts. Uh, her son, Ling Chen, is there in the center. And these portraits of her family, to me, um, really were radical also in the context of the National Portrait Gallery, the scale, the fact that they were hybrid, uh, so in some cases, hybrid sculpture paintings. This is a shaped canvas with architectural elements. Um, this is the portrait of her father when she reunited with him after growing up without him. Um, he was seized by the communists when she was an infant and um, she never knew him until she was in her forties when she returned to China in 1994 to be reunited with him. And actually that, ex that, a uh, portrait will be in a show at uh, LA MOCA in the fall. 
And here's the photograph that it was based on. The show also alluded to the influence of her peers and professors at UCSD, including her mentor um, and teacher, Alan Caprell. There's Jeff Kelly on the right. Um, she was surrounded by artists such as Carrie Mae Weems, and um, she also was friends um, and, and was mentored by Maura Roth. And she developed a conceptual framework for her art making practice, um, which suddenly diverged from her socialist realist training in China and led her to become experimental and um, really push the boundaries um, of art making practice and push against her socialist realist roots in China. Um, I'm showing you a painting here, Grandma, which I have a great announcement to make about is being acquired by the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts. So as part of this legacy work, we are in active discussions with major museums across the country and acquisitions are being placed um, prominently. Uh, and so this is one example of, of, of an acquisition that's happening right now. As the exhibition progressed um, through the door from the family gallery where you see her grandfather, um, there is a gallery devoted to uh, her experimentation and um, conception of gender and through a variety of different forms, um, some installation art, um, some pure painting, this is Goddess of Love, Goddess of Liberty, which was done in response to her watching the events unfold um, during the massacre at Tiananmen Square. And in May, on May 2nd, there will be an exhibition at the Ryan Lee Gallery in New York that will uh, involve artwork made as a response to the Tiananmen Square massacre. And so please note on your calendar, May 2nd is the opening of that show. Um, Jeff's writing a very important essay about that work um, along with Christina Yang, who is also contributing an essay to the catalog. The show will also include images based on photographs that Hung found in 1991 on her first return trip to China. Um, where she visited a Beijing film archive and found photographs of prostitutes in these very elaborate photo stage settings. And she recreated those settings um, and monumental paintings where she honored these women and gave them um, back their dignity, as she would say. And this is a painting that was in the show in Washington and is actually in a private collection in Washington. Um, but there will be other examples of her prostitute paintings in the Ryan Lee show in New York. We also included her series, Where is Mao, um, which belongs to the Denver Art Museum. And a series of paintings based on this photograph of orphaned mission girls taken by W.A.P. Martin and published in The Awakening of China in 1907. Hung was a student of history and she was constantly looking through archival photographs and making new paintings based on old photographs. These are uh, this, a series of mission girl paintings that we included. Beautiful, delicate and powerful small paintings. Another gallery was devoted to Hung Lu's paintings of refugees and migrants um, and including uh, comfort women who you see on that center wall. And leading from that gallery, um, we enter the gallery devoted to her, one of her final bodies of work based on Dorothea Lange's archive at the Oakland Art Museum. 
And I love this juxtaposition because you see the connection between the work that was focused on Chinese subjects and then the paintings that she made based on American subjects during the Dust Bowl. And her focus constantly, a th one of the through lines in her work were uh, the subject of women and children. This is her own son, uh, Ling Chen, and the photograph that she based this on, often taking these tiny snapshots and blowing them up into large scale monumental paintings that you cannot turn away from. Another exciting announcement um, in terms of acquisitions is this portrait, which was in the Refugees Gallery, is going to go to the Phillips Collection in Washington, D.C. as a gift. Um, so uh, this is in the collection of Roger Mann in Oakland. An incredible painting that the director and the curators of the Phillips immediately associated with Jacob Lawrence's migration series and had other ideas about how to install this with the collection um, uh, juxtaposed with other paintings and works of art about migration and, and refugees. As Hung Lu um, explored the Dorothea Lang archive, she often thought back to her own experience during the Cultural Revolution where she um, sketched and made photographs of the villagers and peasants around her. And so there was this natural connection, you know, between her life in China um, and the full circle of studying American history at the end of her life. And then these are her final two self-portraits, which you saw earlier um, and are now in the collection of the National Portrait Gallery in Washington. Um, both reflections on the experience of being isolated during COVID um, and also facing the end. Um, she, in The Last Dandelion, um, you really see her looking out to an uncertain future, but doing so with such bravery and such fortitude. So the opening of the exhibition um, ended up becoming a memorial and uh, we celebrated her life and her career here in Washington. Um, the National Portrait Gallery is the third oldest building in Washington. And um, she truly summoned ghosts that night. It felt very uh, much like there were um, layers of history and that she was adding new layers of history to that space. And it was a really beautiful, magical tribute. Um, people came from all over the country and the world, including China, and it was in the middle of COVID. So it was really um, an extraordinary experience and an event and um, really meaningful, um, but poignant way to celebrate her life. And so uh, about a year ago, I left the National Portrait Gallery and um, it was after some discussions with Jeff about Hung's um, legacy. And what we have, what we all realize that when you lose someone as a family member, it's overwhelming. And going through the papers, the uh, everything that has to be done, um, and the aftermath of, of losing a loved one is um, completely overwhelming. And I know that from my own family. And I, I talked to Jeff about how I might be able to help. And so um, we slowly uh, discussed a plan. And I knew from the beginning that I needed to understand what was left behind um, what kind of papers were left behind. I had heard Hung tell me that she would love for her studio to be an active place, to continue to be active, maybe one day to be an artist residency, um, and for there to be 
internships in her name and fellowships. And, and I thought this is the way I can use my museum experience um, to connect with institutions and, and with scholars and curators and archivists and help get the legacy organized. And so now that is what we're doing. I started this job in April last year. And the first thing I did was to gather a group of friends um, who had different areas of expertise uh, of different generations and different relationships with Hung to start going through the boxes. There were 40, about 46 boxes in storage. And we came together and carefully and deliberately went through the boxes and inventoried loosely what's there. Um, some of you who are on this call participated in this process, including Lava. We found some remarkable material and this archive will go to the Smithsonian Archives of American Art. And Hung had mentioned the Smithsonian Archives to me um, in her last week because she knew that Stephanie Sayuko, the artist, had had a residency at the Smithsonian and had found um, really meaningful work in the archive and, um, and created new projects based on the archive. And Hung was also aware that scholars come to the Smithsonian from all over the world to use the archive. So um, here's Lava <laughs> with Susan Van Dyne, who is a former Smith College professor and an archive, archive specialist. And Toby, I know Toby's on. Toby has been an incredible uh, source of support and, and help in all aspects of this legacy project. And I'll just show you a few treasures that we unearthed, um, including a sketchbook that Hung carried with her in her 20s. And these are sketches from the Dunhuang Caves. A beautiful little sketch of Ling Chen as a newborn. It says Sunday at home. Plans for installations that she worked on with Jeff. This is the painting that I showed earlier um, in response to Tiananmen Square that's now in the collection of the Dallas Museum of Art. But these kinds of treasures are magical and there's just one after another her um, passport from 1984, when she first came to the United States to study at UCSD. In this photograph, you see uh, Matthew Sims, who is the West Coast archivist for the Smithsonian Archives of American Art, who has been helping us with this project. And you also see Bing Chen, who is Hung's best friend from childhood, who grew up with Hung um, and lives in San Jose now and has been invaluable in giving me context for what we're finding and translating the Chinese and, and offering her stories and support. We're also finding reviews. I believe Han knew she would be this famous because she saved everything. And it's remarkable to go back in time and see how she was received by critics in this piece from The Village Voice, um, which uh, you know was, was 1989. This is her first show in New York. And um, she was called, it was called the best show in New York at this time. And then photographs of source material for her paintings. Uh, th these are photographs of the photographs that she took in the Beijing Film Archive in 91. And so we're already able to let scholars and curators have some access to these treasures. This is curator Oreen Zara at the National Museum of Women in the Arts. Many of you know her, she's wonderful. And uh, she, and preparing the installation of Hung's work at, at the National, at the newly renovated National Museum of Women and the Arts, she went through the photographs and was able to locate most of the source images for um, the paintings based on prostitute uh, images in the collection. And she incorporated those into 
a wonderful interactive online component to the exhibition. And here you see the installation at the National Museum of Women and the Arts, which is just magical. It's a beautiful, beautiful jewel box of an installation. The painting Corn Carrier came to the museum as a gift um, because the owners were so thrilled with the installation. And I have to thank Fred um, for your donation um, of of one of the paintings that you see on the right hand wall of the, one of the cynical fish paintings, such an incredible gift. Another installation shot. There have been many excellent exhibitions that have happened over the course of the last year. One, um, for those of you in San Francisco, um, you may have seen the Rena Branston Gallery's Cap Street Project show based on Hung Lu's breakthrough exhibition in 1988 that was the result of her Cap Street residency. And here you see a photo of that original installation in the Monadnock building. And there's Hung Lu at that time, surrounded by her triptych uh, titled The Branches. Family members from this family came to the opening, um, which was wonderful. Another installation view. At the same time at SF MoMA, there was an installation of work from the permanent collection. Um, and it was another jewel box of a show, um, not a big show, but really impactful, beautiful show. There was excellent programming around it. Uh, Lava participated in one of the programs and uh, did a talk about Hung Lu's painting of her grandfather. These images look a little bit faded and that's because they are film stills. A documentary film group is working on a film about Hung's life. Um, and uh, they've been following us around collecting footage from the various exhibitions, interviewing friends um, and scholars and artists about Hung's life. And, and here we are visiting the show with Rena Branston, um, Nancy Lim and Maureen Sarvetar, the two curators at SF MoMA who put the show together here standing next to Rena on her left. And of course, Trish Branston and Walter Maziel. Um, on the far left is our wonderful studio director, Marcus, Kager, who was a graduate student at Mills and uh, is a practicing artist himself. He's doing wonderful work um, keeping the studio alive and active. And of course, you see Lava here too, who's been an, a constant source of <laughs> strength and friendship and love. <laughs> there was also a show at the Jordan Schnitzer Museum at Portland State University, which was part of the Converge Biennial. Um, a really powerful show curated by uh, Christian Viveros Fane, who is based in New York and writes for the Brooklyn Rail. Um, he used the collection of Jordan Schnitzer to um, put together a very thoughtful show, which ended up being the centerpiece of the Converge Art Fair. And uh, as you can see, it was multimedia across time periods and subject matter, um, but it introduced new audiences to Hung's work and um, got a lot of really great press. The studio has also been an active place for visits from students, um, scholars, and practicing artists. And here you see a group of Berkeley uh, students who are taking a class on archives with the artist Stephanie Sayuko. And here they are. We do nothing without fun. In the spirit of Hung, everything um, we do has an element of fun. 
or food <laughs> or, you know, we, we want to make this project, um, this legacy project as joyful as possible because that's that's what Hung would want. Um, and she she spread so much joy and she connected. She was a connector of people, as we all know. And I, I find that um, new friendships are being made constantly. She left behind this wonderful circle and it remains a fruitful circle um, with new projects developing every day. Uh, an exciting new acquisition um, is the National Gallery of Art's first acquisition of Hung's work with this painting post age, which is donated very generously by Marcia Garces Williams of San Francisco. It's an 80 by 80 canvas. So again, major acquisition. And then as, as uh, you know, there's a show at the Mills College Art Museum, which is called Look Up to the Sky and it features a selection of Hung's women students. And this is something that Hung had hoped for when she was alive and was talking actively to Stephanie Hayner and the students about it. And Stephanie Hayner, the director of the Mills Art Museum, um, saw it through. And it is a spectacular show. And the students um, are feeling very proud. Um, it was like a reunion for them. And it was exciting to see uh, all of the different ways that Hung influenced her students. And none of their work looks like hers. There's a lot of abstraction. It was fascinating to see what the students took from her and how they talked about her as a mentor. Uh, we celebrated this show with old friends. This is um, Jane um, Green who endowed the lecture on the left and uh, or the lecture series that we we held a panel discussion and um, it was part of the Jane Green um, lecture series. And here you also see the former president of Mills College, Jan Holmgren. We celebrated with a festive dinner for the students who participated in the panel discussion. And here you see artist um, Mel Prest and um, Ro uh, Nicole Fine and Rosanna uh, Castillo Diaz uh, talking about Hung as a mentor. And at the podium is Mills College Art Museum director Stephanie Hainer. We have a lot coming up, including um, a show at Georgetown University Art Gallery the De La Cruz Gallery, um, and I'll be teaching a class in the fall uh, for graduate students in art history who um, will work with me on a Hung Lu exhibition. And the body of work that we're drawing from is Hung Lu's Happy and Gay series, which is based on Maoist propaganda children's books that children would read on the street. And this is a painting that shows the scene of young children reading these little tiny booklets, um, and this is the kind of imagery that will be in the show. They're like Dick and Jane books. So what I'm hoping to do um, is to expose new scholars, new generations of students to Hung's work, empower them to use the archive to do research, and, um, and by new ways in to her um, and bring out work that may be surprising, that may not be initially, you know, immediately recognizable as Hung's work to show the breadth of her practice. There is a lot of work in storage that is installation um, and, uh, and works on paper. Um, she was constantly pushing herself and pushing her practice. And so there's so much to be done. And it's just extraordinarily exciting to think of the possibilities. And we are building a new website. Um, so keep an eye on this. It will uh, not be ready until late this year um, because it takes so long to build an interactive website. It will have deep archival material. 
And this is paving the way for a catalog raisin A. We're working with the group, um, Brent Foster Jones and McFadden and Thorpe, who worked with the Diebenkorn Foundation on their website and social media. They will launch a new Instagram site that will be very content heavy and educational um, in April. And um, and they worked on the catalog raisonne for the for Diebenkorn, which was uh, published by Yale. So we're happy to have them on board and to um, begin this work, which will take time, but is is so important. And um, and we'll be able to we're going to digitize the archive as soon as possible. I'm working on um, that. And so we can um, start making the archival materials accessible to students and researchers and curators. So that's my overview, a very cursory overview of what's been happening in the past few months. Uh, and I'm happy to open it up, Julia, for questions or if you had any questions to begin with. Oh, I just want to say thank you. That was such a tremendous overview of, of everything that's been happening over the years. Um, I would just say I can, I think through Jamie, we can share an email with the link to the full Mills panel and also the information again about the show at the at Mills Museum, Mills College Museum. And then also a number of us are going to the National Museum of Women in the Arts. Will Hung Show still be up when we're there? Yes. Wonderful. Um, I think I'll just open it up to um, anybody who want. I can let me if you if we get out of share screen, okay, I can I unmute can. people. Um, let me get this going. Participants. Yeah, let's see if I can do this. Uh, if you'd like to speak, just raise your hand. I can try to unmute you, or I can unmute everybody maybe um lava jeff did either of you um well, i'll is... say something <laughs> oh lorna yes please okay uh, first of all i want to thank you for um julia for organizing this and Kate, for this wonderful presentation we all love Hong's work and it's just unbelievable to see this and it's wonderful that you're carrying on her legacy so it's just was such an honor and Jeff for you to be here as well we're just very thrilled and honored that you would do this for us so Dorothy thank you and and uh, for all your incredible work and um, I just had one question um, that you had mentioned that either you or um uh, Hung Lu, they were connected with Li Ming Wei, and I just wondered what that connection might have been because he's having a show at the De Young, and I've just gotten to know his incredible work and um, wanted to see what that connection might have been. Yes, that was it. Was through me. Um, uh, I curated a performance art series at the National Portrait Gallery, and we had him do his Sonic Blossom performance where he offers a gift of song to museum visitors through local opera singers who were roaming the galleries. And it was a beautiful performance. Um, Hung did not know him personally, but I during the pandemic, he did a performance at the Metropolitan Museum of Art, which was uh, broadcast live online in the closed museum. And I watched it with Hung. Mm -hmm. oh. when we were all separated and we talked about it so um there is there is that connection too but uh he's an yeah. amazing artist and I do feel his generosity shares so much with Hung's generosity and well you can see how they would have connected um absolutely. if anyone gets the chance to see his work it's very conceptual but his ideas of peace and belonging and inner interpersonal relationships and um, the changing of life. I just see how much she would have related to his work and both, they're both so kind and genuine people. So absolutely. Um, and you know, the exciting thing now is there are so many curators making new connections with new artists, thinking about new ways of 
presenting Hung's work in new contexts, I could see them in a show together one day. Yes, and you know, we had the Hung Lu show right in the atrium um, at the De Young, and now uh, there's a huge sand piece that has been done by Li Ming Wei, and um, it's right in the atrium, right where Hung had her show. That's and the piece I watched with her. The all, sand, so it's all... <laughs> It all that's amazing I know. yeah no yeah. thank you thank you and anybody who wants to speak can unmute themselves sorry about that well sometimes oh. it's such a great presentation that everyone's speechless <laughs> I know. well i i feel so um grateful for this because it's enlightening to me. I, I, I've always, I've been aware of her for a long time when I lived in Dallas many, many years ago and was trying to get into art and paint. There was a huge influx. It's, it became this big mega center for artists from the coast. So there are these shows and that's when I first became aware of Hung and was very impressed. And then just over the years, you know, seeing her work here and there, but not really coming here until the two, the late uh, 2000s. I don't know. I just didn't know that much about her, you know, um, so just in general. So this was so educational for me and I really appreciate it. I just were, enjoyed were, it. Were you in Dallas in the in 1989 1990 19 so is she and so is yes yes <laughs> well they i don't know if they were there i just remember the shows and and you know there was just it just be exploded there the art and it, from everywhere it wasn't just you know regional and i mean dallas has always been had great philanthropic art collectors and museums you know but it was i they were there living there Yes, so Jeff. Oh, I didn't know. It's it's because of Jeff that you saw all those artists. Actually, Jeff, you should you should say why. He's muted. You're, you're muted. Um, Hung and I lived in Arlington, uh, where I was at UT Arlington. Oh, in the late eighties, like eighty six, eighty six to ninety, and. Uh, um, you know, and I was in charge of a thing called the Center for Research in Contemporary Art, or CIRCA, C-R-C-A, and I did experimental programming. Um, it wasn't a museum, of course, but yeah, we, we had artists come and do practice of, of forms of research that allowed them to do things that they wouldn't be able to do in a gallery or museum setting. And Hung was there. And so, you know, we were, we did a lot of stuff and had a lot of people come in from around the country and paid a lot of attention to artists in Texas and in, in Dallas as well. Uh, people I like, see. you know, Ed, Ed Blackburn and, and Vernon Fisher and yeah. uh, Laney Yarber, who was a performance artist in Dallas. I mean, great people. And um, so Hung, you know, had only been in the United States since 84, but um, because of the program I was running there, she was exposed to all kinds of things that uh, otherwise in most parts of the country, you wouldn't be exposed to that way. So uh, her career kind of began to pick up when we were still living in, in Dallas and her her first, well, her first major project was in San Francisco at the Capstone project in 88 and then in 89 Tiananmen Square happened and that became a a reason for her to do a lot of the work she did in fact the Dallas Museum of Art has her first painting about that which they it was the first painting a museum ever collected and um wow so that's that's that I could go on for way too long but <laughs> We lived in Dallas, and then we then she got the job at Mills College in 1990, and so we oh. we did our reverse grapes of wrath. No, that was actually <laughs> going to Texas was the reverse grapes of yeah. wrath, the right direction, and so we we came here. <laughs> wow, 
I, I wasn't aware she lived there. Um, or you did either. That's interesting. I moved there in 85. Yeah. But, um, 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 thank you. Thank you for this, for organizing the program and um, the opportunity to connect with Hung uh, through her work and the people who loved her once again. And hi, Jeff. <laughs> um, <laughs> Seeing the slides really, especially the slides of her opening at the National Portrait Gallery, which you described as being a memorial, which in fact it was, and having been there and experienced that, I just got very emotional and teary all over again, I have to admit. Um, Hung was such a remarkable and generous human being. I was not a student of hers. I didn't attend Mills, but I joined Rena Branston Gallery about 10 years ago. And when I joined the gallery, which um, is Hung's gallery and Hung had, has been with Rena since, I believe not since the early nineties. Since um, 19, Hung, 1991. Yes, um, Hung really took me under her wing and was an incredible advocate and mentor. And she was so much fun. Oh, she was so <laughs> much fun. I, you know, we have her works and her works are incredibly um, powerful and important and her she was absolutely brilliant. Her sense of humor was amazing. And when she walked into a room, you know, we hear this, this person, you know, they walk into a room and they light up the room. You know, she walked into the room and a firecracker went off. <laughs> a celebratory fire, you know, it was just, um, she was, she was a force in so many ways. And I feel incredibly fortunate that um, she was a friend. And even now, her work, I mean, she still teaches me, she does. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I mean, this legacy project would not be possible without artists, especially you, Lava, who knew and loved Hung and who continue her vision and her work through your work. Um, and having you in the studio to work on the archive and hear your ideas about future projects that you might do because of what you found in the archive makes me think that Hung is with us. You know, I mean, she's right there um, pushing us all forward in our own ways. And we're, as you said, she's still teaching us. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lava. Yeah. Um... Yeah, can you hear me all right? Yes, yeah. we're in uh, Paso Robles, so my husband is in the room, so I had on the um, um, these things. Anyway, um, so I'm a docent with the San Jose Museum, Museum of Art, and was very lucky to get to know Hung uh, when we were both honored at the Art Museum, and um, devastated when she passed. Um, and I wanted to do something to honor her. Um, so I do docenting and create presentations uh, for middle and high, high school. Mm -hmm. So anyway, just launching the uh, Resident Alien Hung Lu presentation in April with the first uh, Mandarin class. And uh, the goal is to help youth learn about her, her life, you know, the history that she shared um, it's just something that I felt I really wanted to do. So, um, very excited and, um, uh, yeah, April 22nd is the first presentation. So <laughs> with, um, uh, first, second and third year Mandarin students, and also there will be others with art students all over Santa Clara County. So. That's such a beautiful project, Toby. I know, um, Hung, 
was so good at painting children. And also when she walked into a room, she zoomed in and paid such care, such tender attention, enthusiastic attention to whatever mm. child was in the room. And when she met Irving, when he was like three months old, she tried teaching him <laughs> Mandarin. So I can only imagine how much she would love that project. And I also, um, a note I want to end on is um, that no matter how far Hung got in her career, she always made time. I think this is kind of unique. Sometimes mm -hmm. people advance in their career and they become too busy to mentor or to take student groups into their studios or to cook dinner for their former students or take them out to dinner or go to her um, former students' exhibitions and shows and show up for emerging artists. And no matter how um, far along Hung's career progressed, she always showed up and always had an open door. And I think she would really um, be in sync with the um, with with the mission of this group to support emerging women artists. Um, so Dorothy, thank you yeah. so thank much. You. Um, <laughs> Lava. Thank you for being here. And Jeff, thank you for joining us. Everybody, um, it's really wonderful to be together in, in memory of Hung. Um, and thank, thank you, Julia. Yes. Julia. Yeah. So, and, and I also want to extend an invitation um, to this group to come to the studio for a meal or viewings, uh, you know, of, of what's happening there. Um, I told Julia before the program, I'm happy to help coordinate that. And Jeff has been so gracious, um, bringing, bringing friends and, and sharing the magical space um, of this. I hope, I hope to see you all there one day soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Hi, everyone. Good night. Hi, thanks so 